And joining us now for more is Joel Rubin, executive director of the American Jewish Congress and former deputy assistant secretary of state. And he speaks to us from Chevy Chase, Maryland. Joel, great to have you back. Look, you followed this issue closely. You worked and know some of the key people involved in trying to make this, uh, revive this agreement. I just want to get your temperature of where it stands, because the Biden administration has been saying for months, mid-February is a deadline of sorts. Well, Kalev, it's great to be with you. And I think Mike had it uh, right on the head in terms of where we will be with political outcomes. The temperature right now does look like there is a, a deal in the making, but that it will be a deal that potentially could have a narrow, narrower window, excuse me, of breakout time. Uh, during the 2015 deal, a 12-month breakout time period was negotiated. That was a critical selling point for the Obama administration. Uh, this time, it looks like it may be narrower, and that could cause some heartburn for Democrats. But nonetheless, Democrats are looking at this and saying a deal is better than no deal because right now Iran is closer to a bomb than it's ever been ever since Donald Trump left the original nuclear deal. Uh, not, right. Some people are talking about as, as uh, the breakout time, meaning the time possible to make a, a weapon could be as, as, as low as three months here. And of course, this is not well, the... I this Enough fissile material, not the weapon itself. The I'm sorry, fissile, fissile material to make the weapon. Yes. Thank you for correcting me. But uh, also that this is not the, the bigger, stronger deal that was some people spoke about. So I want to ask you right. about that. Uh, is it possible that the, enough Democrats would turn against Joe Biden that, that there might be reconsideration of going ahead? There's certainly going to be a lot of discomfort. There's a real desire to go longer and stronger, as Secretary Blinken and, and the president essentially said. They wanted a deal that was not just nuclear, but wanted to do uh, more on the other files, like uh, Iran's support for terrorism, its ballistic missile program. Uh, if that's not going to happen, and it doesn't look like that is going to happen, it's going to be a bitter pill. But again, the alternative is nothing. And uh, the Democrats in, in Washington are watching this Iranian government, which is a, a very hostile government, very anti-Israel, very anti-American, uh, probably the worst one to negotiate with in the last four decades, and uh, are trying to figure out how to prevent them from getting a nuclear weapon and looking at this as the route while still being very unsatisfied with these other follow-on situations, which give a, the Republicans a lot of opportunity to be uh, on the attack. Right. Part of the uh, issue here is that would, it, this would uh, involve lifting, some, uh, lifting sanctions on Iran yes. at a time when the Biden administration does seem to be reengaging in the region. Uh, I'm talking about the Mideast, especially the Gulf area, uh, providing more uh, weapons to, for example, the Emirates, uh, being more active and trying to counter Iranian aggression. And it seems like it's almost like uh, two, two different tracks going in two different directions here. Well, this is the big risk, is uh, what happens if the sanctions are lifted and what happens to those funds. And, and yet we can see also under maximum pressure under Donald Trump that Iran still continued to expand its reach into the region, still destabilize Yemen, uh, supported the war in Syria, has been attacking neighbors, uh, supporting the, the, the Houthi attacks against the Emirates. So uh, it, it's not as if we've seen sanctions stop those uh, aggressive activities. And, and that's the challenge now is building the regional coalition. And the Biden team has been very active in engaging Israel at the highest levels consistently in security talks, as well as the Emiratis, the Saudis, uh, Qataris, everyone in the region to try to make sure that Iran's behavior is addressed. Uh, it may not get it in this initial deal, but it's not turning a blind eye to that. Right. It's interesting, Joe, because so I think some people saw one of the rationales behind the Iran deal would free up the administration to make that famous pivot to China uh, that it right. wanted to. But it does seem that it, it doesn't look that way. It looks like uh, that because of events on the ground here, the Biden administration has had to recalibrate its Mideast as policy, especially in the Gulf region. Yeah, I don't think anyone should believe that the Biden administration is going anywhere in terms of the Middle East. It's not. Uh, President Biden just conducted a major uh, 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 attack, uh, uh, had our special forces conduct a major attack against the leader of the Islamic State just in Syria last week. So the United States is engaged and our allies are going to be asking for more rather than less support uh, in the event of a nuclear deal with Iran. All right. Of course, uh, the realities of the region is that uh, America just can't, or an American administration just can't quit it because uh, yeah. somehow the reality just in, uh, always intrudes on the, some of the best laid uh, plans. Joel Rubin, executive director of the American Jewish Congress. Thank you for joining us again on the run. Thank now. you, Cliff.